Ladies and gentlemen, we are back in Code Fights doing alternating sums. This one is kind of a gimme. In typical Code Fights fashion, they give you a hard one at the end and then the beginning of the next section. They're typically a little bit easier. In this case, all we're trying to do is we have one team and two teams. So we want to find out what the scores are by alternating sums. What that means is one gets the even numbers, one gets the odd numbers. Pretty, pretty straightforward uh, when you think about it. So we're gonna go ahead along with the, the convention that they've provided and create team one, team two, let's initialize those to zero. After that, we're gonna go ahead and create a for each loop. And we're going to, uh, excuse me, uh, we are going to create a for each loop and pass in our callback function. In here, we'll take in an element, which will be the, the value, as well as whatever index we're on. We're gonna need that index attribute so that we can find out if the index is uh, even or odd, so that we know what team to add to. And then we can, we can say, just do an if statement, so if I shoot index, Modulo two is equal equal to zero. I mean it's a, I mean it's a, meaning it's even. Go ahead and add to T one. So T one plus equals uh, the element. Else, go ahead and do the opposite. Right. Go ahead and say team two. plus equals the element. And then at the end here, we just need to return an array with those two values in it. Team one, comma, team two. Drop our semicolon. We don't really need it there, but it should be all the same. And that should be it. So again, let's go over the logic real quick. A um, little bit of an easier one, but we have two variables that we're storing the even and odd values in, and we're doing that with a, a for each. The element is the value in the array. The index is the current index number that it's there. We use the index number, find out if it's even. If it's even, we add that, that index value to that else. We're adding the other one. Finally, we're just returning an array with the two values in the form that the, the algorithm is asking for. But uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. This was a little bit of a quicker one. Um, I originally didn't use a for each loop. I just used a for loop and use I. But I wanted to change this to part of the fun of, do, of redoing these is saying, hey, I think I can maybe make an improvement here. And even though it, it runs with the same amount of iterations and all that sort of stuff, for me, I need to be more comfortable using the documentation to the fullest, right? So current value and then index, stuff like that. And that allows me to become a better developer. So when you're solving these algorithms, try to, especially in the easier ones, uh, go back and say, hey, what is one thing that I know I can do, but I don't necessarily do it, even if it's just the same thing. And you're saying, you know what? I don't ever use a for each loop in, in the situation where I can start using for each loops. It looks a little bit more sophisticated, I would say. Um, maybe just having additional skills because it's not like you're going to forget a for loop or anything like that. You probably won't forget a for each loop, but this is just a, a simple example of how maybe you can write a little bit better code when you're solving these. Um, but again, as always, guys, thank you for watching. Join the Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine. Support me on patreon.com slash codenotorial360 and check out our Discord channel. All those links are in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsors, Dev Mountain. If you're looking for a coding boot camp where tuition and housing is included, definitely check them out. Appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.